Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Blender 2.92 took one step closer to reality today. Blender 2.92 beta is now officially available for download. Now it's available on their build servers. I will show you the path and have it linked in the linked article down below. But I do got to warn you, the download speeds are a little slow. But if you're just interested in seeing some of the highlights of what Blender 2.92 beta is all about, you've come to the right place. And what you see in front of you is feature number one. Uh, this is one of those things I've actually already showcased on the channel and this is one of those things that's going to get cooler and cooler as time goes on because there's a new policy at Blender called everything as nodes. It's a move to make everything node driven. So instead of having to script uh, things to make massive changes to all across your project, what you can do now is create these node graphs. So what you see right here, this is available in the new node editor. This is geometry nodes. And what you're doing with these nodes is scattering rocks across the scene. It's one step towards making Blender more like Houdini. Now I've actually already covered this in a previous video. So I'm just going to highlight it because this is definitely one of the major new features of Blender 2.92. But I'm not going to go into much more detail than this because quite frankly, I've already covered it. Now the next feature we're going to take a quick look at. I'm also not going to go into a ton of detail because I think this one actually deserves its own video. And it's a new feature called Asset Browser. Now, this is a new way of organizing asset libraries. So what you can do basically is start uh, adding all these various different things, scenes, animations, objects, shading, environment, details, and so on can be saved as assets. So as an example, I could grab one of the pebbles from the scene here. We go to ID data, and then we just go mark as asset. And then now if I go here, we go to objects and collections, there is the pebble. So if I was here working in my 3D world, I could actually now use that asset to basically go ahead and create new um new instances of it. So you can use this for storing your shaders, for showing uh, your geometry. It's just an overhauled library system and it's a lot more understandable than the old system. We'll get to some of the details in the release notes in just a few minutes, but I definitely wanted to highlight this, but I'm going to go ahead and look at this in more depth in a future video because this is definitely one of the cool new features with Blender 2.92, but I wanted you to be made aware of it. It is an all new type available here under asset browsers or by pressing shift and F1. At the same time, we also have the geometry node editor available here, currently mapped to shift F3, which is just a node editor along with the compositor and texture node editor. So eventually you're gonna have all kinds of node editors, uh, but this is the new way of organizing things in general. This is the new um, objects collection. Now while we're at it, let's go back to the default cube scene. All right, here we go. So we had to get a starting cube into a video somewhere. This is probably my favorite new feature. And to be honest, it is one of the smallest things here and it was supposed to be in blender 2.91 and it got bumped and it got bumped into 2.92 but even then it is an experimental feature so if you want to check this one out what you need to do is go into preferences uh, and you want to turn on developer extras then go to experimental here and you want to turn on a add object tool and once that is turned on you have a new tool in your toolbar here i'm in the object mode and what i could do is i could click this we can hold it down we've got various different options but this puts you into i guess we'll call it create object mode so if you want to start adding some spheres in your world we are in the sphere tool click once it shows on one axis let go the other axis and then boom so now if you need to instance a lot of geometry in your scene you can do so so we got again a number of primitive types available here this is just, especially if you're the type of person who does blocking out of levels, that kind of thing, this new feature is awesome. I, I really like this feature. It's a really small one. And like I said, it was supposed to be in Blender 2.91. And for some reason, it didn't make the cut. But it is here. Just do be aware. Once again, you do have to go into your preferences to enable this guy. So it's available right there. I'd actually just turn everything on. If you're checking out the beta, you probably want to see all the new stuff in general anyways. So that's what I did. I did click, 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 click to make sure that everything we want is there. I love this new feature. And it's so simple on the whole. The next new feature we're going to highlight is actually in Grease Pencil. I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene here. Goodbye, default cube. All right, so 2D animation scene we're not going to save here. And here we are in a typical drawing mode for a 2D animation. So if you've used Grease Pencil or if you haven't used Grease Pencil recently, it's gotten a ton of new capabilities. Also got another one I wanted to showcase today, but this beat it out. You can also now, if you saw the ability to drop in a trace image, uh, and have it automatically create grease pencil out of it. Really cool. You can drop in a line art thing. It'll automatically convert it into grease pencils. Well, you can now also do that with animation. So you can drop in a, an animated file of frames and it will automatically create the corresponding grease pencils out of it. Very cool. Especially if you want to convert your traditional animation over. But what we're looking at today is a little bit simpler. I'm just going to go ahead and we are going to draw a curve. It's a typical grease pencil there. We go into the edit mode. You're going to see here 
before I select everything, it is made up of a number of different plot points. But what we can do now is we can select this little guy right here, and now there is curve editing available. Once so that is selected, you can go over here, for example, and switch this to uh, select the individual control points. Here, we can control how the curve editing should happen. And now it's a matter of, let's go ahead and grab some things. I can use the G key to move that individual key around. I can grab a control handle on it, or I can actually use rotate to control it. And I can use scale to rotate it as well. So your normal G, S, and R keys control it, but basically you can have it control via curve control points. So you can select each one here. Your traditional hotkeys still work. So you now can take your strokes and edit them as if they were curves. It allows you to get nicer flowing editing points and you don't have a ton of different control points to handle. As you can see also, these things are all animatable and good to go there. So I definitely like the new curve editing feature here as well. And we've got one final demonstration. So we're gonna go here, I'm gonna start to a new scene. I'll get rid of the default cube and instead we need a monkey. All right, let's get the monkey in here, switch to edit mode, and let's just do a couple of subdivides. All right, there we go. So there is our monkey, and this is a sculpting feature we're going to show. Okay, so go ahead up here. We're gonna switch into sculpting mode. And what we want to do is switch to the grab tool over here, press N to bring up our tool options over here. And the new feature that we've got here is the grab silhouette. So this will confine it to your edges. So if you wanna make, just tweak, to the, the corners or the edges of your object, um, you can do so in the grab silhouette mode. Kind of keeps it to the outline. It will not uh, tweak the underlying or back edges. Great for doing profile highlights and kind of thing. The, the one example that they have on the Blender documentation is to do the edges of a finger. Uh, but the grab silhouette sculpt tool is definitely a neat little feature. It's kind of just kind of keeps you to the edges. So there we kind of went beyond it. So yeah, that is the new sculpting feature I highlighted in this release. Now, there is a bunch more in this particular release, and I'll probably do another video somewhere in between now and the final release of this one. But if you want to go ahead and grab it, like I said, it is available here. This download, at least today, because 2.92 is literally released today, it was a little slow for me for 200 megabytes. It took me like 20 minutes to get this to download. So do be aware, um, this build server isn't as fast as their normal download server. So it could take you a bit of time. If you want to grab it, it is available at builder.blender.org forward slash download. I will of course have that linked in the linked article down below. Uh, if you want to get into the details of this one, there are release notes. They kind of keep them up to date as they move through the various different beacons. Beacon three being beta, Beacon 4, I think, is a release candidate or is actually just full-on release. So we just left Beacon 2, which was alpha. You can actually see the schedule here. We go on past Beacons. These are kind of, uh, yeah, so okay, I guess Beacon 5 is release. Beacon 3 is like a bug. F no, Beacon 3 is release. Prepare release for the, I, actually, I don't understand anymore. But basically, we're looking at our, we are now in Beacon 3. The only things that will be changed is bug fixing. And then that we're prepared for release, which is Beacon 4, which will be February the 17th. And then finally, we will be released in February the 24th. So if you're wondering what the process is, well, that's where we are. So basically, we are at Beacon 3, which is beta. So we're going to see basically be in beta for at least a month. Now, those numbers can obviously change if they run into huge problems, but they don't tend to. They tend to stick to their schedules, They're more likely to cut a feature if it's problematic and move it into the next release. So you can see a breakdown of all the various different things that were added in this case. These are updated as they go through it. Now, the one thing I did find interesting in all of this is that they're missing a category here. I, I couldn't find it for the life of me. And that is the new asset browser. So I went through all of these things. Asset browsers aren't there and there's no asset browser link. So I will link this separately. This is the new uh, asset library. So again, you can see all the various different shaders around, makes it really easy to instance and use them. Here's where they will default be located. Here is how you go ahead and use them. This one is a huge new feature. And again, I'm gonna probably follow it up with its own video because I think that one is a substantial enough uh, new tool, uh, definitely makes the data block system a little bit easier to understand and your assets a little easier to work with. And then uh, finally, the cover art that we saw here, the Blender splash screen for Blender 2.92, which is the work of Jonah Kapars Kaparska. Uh, I'll link to her page as well. If you wanna check out some of her art, if you're wondering where the graphics came from, that is where. So that is Blender 2.92 beta, literally released today. A lot of lovely new stuff in there. And there's a bunch more than what I covered. There's some new uh, particle or physics simulation stuff in there. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff actually under Grease Pencil. I just picked one aspect. 
but there's a bunch more to it. Not a whole lot of new sculpting features this time, but hey, we've been so spoiled in previous releases. Uh, but there's more there for sure. Do be sure to check out the full release notes. You may find something that you're interested in. As I mentioned, there's some new uh, simulation options in um, the uh, physics section of things. Also a little bit more in like the miscellaneous areas. EV got a couple new features, including crypto mat. There's more to this release than what I highlighted here, but I don't want to make this a six hour video. In fact, I'm going to finish this video right now. So let me know what you thought of this particular release. Are you excited for Blender 2.92? What is it you really want to see in an upcoming release? Let me know these things. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.